Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, my name is Sarah and in today's video we are going to be crocheting a bat together. So this is the full length tutorial for this guy. Before we get into the pattern, I do have a quick disclaimer. This tutorial is filmed with intermediates in mind, meaning I do not slow down or explain the basic terms. If you need any help with that, I do have a beginner series, which I will have up there in the iCards for you and in the description. That goes over all the basic techniques that I will be using and We'll give you a quick refresher if you need it. The written pattern is in the description as well if you'd prefer to crochet this pattern at your own pace. With all that said, let's get right into the material list. For the material list, you will need some yarn. So for these two, I am using a size six Chanel yarn by Loops and Threads. This is Sweet Snuggles Light. You can also make this pattern with a bunch of different other yarn types. You just need to make sure you use the correct hook size. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them as quickly as possible. For the next item on our material list, you're gonna need a crochet hook. Today I'm using a five millimeter hook and this results in some really tight and tense stitches. This hook size might be too small depending on what you're going for. So use, feel free to size up if you want to and just use whatever hook size works best for you. You'll need a pair of scissors a sewing needle. I'm using this one with the little hook at the end. It's easy, really easy to sew with this needle. And then a stitch marker and also a pair of safety eyes if you're using. If you prefer embroidered eyes, I have a tutorial up there that you can check out and use in place of the safety eyes. And the final item on the material list is some stuffing. I have some polyester fiber fill off camera. Oh, and the final, final material is some white yarn. If you'd like to do some facial features, I'll show you how to do this at the end of the video. I will be using a size four Chanel yarn for this, skinny Chanel. With all that said, let's get crocheting. We are going to begin by making the head and body. This is all one section. To make working with Chanel yarn easier, I'll be using some acrylic yarn to start my magic ring. If you don't know how to do this, I have a tips and tricks video for Chanel and I'll have it up here in the iCards and of course in the description for you. But basically, I take the acrylic yarn and start my magic ring and then I finish it with the Chanel yarn. And this just makes it much easier to close up the magic ring. You don't have to worry about it snapping on you. So whether you use the chain two method or the magic ring, you're going to put six single crochets into your chain two method or your magic ring. Now we're going to tighten up our magic ring. I like to pull on both ends of the acrylic and then begin round two. Don't pull too tight, because then it'll be harder to crochet into that first stitch. And for the next round, we're going to increase in each stitch around. Increase is single crochet two in the same stitch. If you're using a stitch marker, feel free to place it in the last stitch of the round from here on out. And for the next round, we're going to increase and then single crochet in the next stitch and then repeat that six times or all the way around. And here we are at the end of that round. For the next round, we're going to increase, single crochet two, and repeat that six times or all the way around.
here's the end of that round. I'm actually going to secure my magic ring real quick and I'm just going to seal it up. I left it a little bit loose so that I could crochet into that chain, or not chain, so I could crochet into that single crochet. Uh, now I'm going to tie the two acrylic tails together and then tie the acrylic to the Chanel just to make it extra secure. And then we have a very nice and clean magic ring with no breakage at all. For the next four rounds, we're going to single crochet in each stitch around. Here we are at the end of our single crochet rounds and now I'm going to insert the safety eyes. If you're not using safety eyes and embroidering them, you can add them on at the end when everything is finished. At least that's the easiest time for me to add them on. To insert the safety eyes, we're going to insert them between the single crochet rounds. So here we have our two single crochet rounds and our two single crochet rounds under it. And we're just going to go right in the middle of those. I'll have on the screen the actual round count. For this, we're going to insert our eyes between those rounds and you want to make sure that our ends are at the back. You want the safety eyes to have four clear stitches between them. Just about here is perfect. There we have our eyes on and nice and secure. For the next round, we are going to decrease in each stitch around and you'll have a total of 12 decreases. I forgot to mention, but in between this round, feel free to stuff. I actually prefer to stuff the head when we finish our final increase round for the body. It gives you a bit of a neck to hold on to and you can stuff it a little easier. But if you prefer to stuff your heads now, definitely feel free to do so. 
For the next round, we're going to single crochet in each stitch around. And for the next round, we're going to increase single crochet one. We'll repeat that six times or all the way around. For the next round, we're going to single crochet in each stitch around. And for the final increase round of the body, we will increase and single crochet two and repeat that six times or all the way around. And here we are at the end of that increase round, and now I will stuff the head. And here's the head stuffed, and now we're going to seal crochet in each stitch around for five rounds.
Here we are at the end of our five single crochet rounds and now we are going to create the feet for this next round. Depending on where you place your safety eyes, you'll have to move the bobbles around, but the gist of it is you want the bobbles to line up with the eyes and have five single crochet stitches between them. If you wish, you can trace the eyes down and mark those stitches. And if you have a hard time making them even with five single crochets, you can also do six single crochets between them. Whatever works for you to make the bobbles even. Because this is a single crochet round, it doesn't matter where you put the bobbles, so you can put as many stitches between them as you prefer. Now I'm going to single crochet around until I get to about here, and then I will begin the first bobble. For me, I bobble with five incomplete double crochets but you can also bobble with as many double crochets as you'd like. So here's about where I start measuring. And in this next stitch, I'm going to place my first bobble. And then I'm going to single crochet in the next five stitches. And bobble once again. And then you're just gonna single crochet around until you get to the last stitch of the round once again. For the next round, we are going to decrease in each stitch around. You can start stuffing now or after the next round like I will, whatever works best for you. Now I will stuff the body. And here is the body stuffed. Now for the next round, we are going to decrease in each stitch once again. Once you have finished decreasing, slip stitch in the next stitch, chain one, and fasten off. You just need a length of yarn long enough to sew up this bottom hole. And there we are. If you need any more stuffing, definitely add it now. And we're going to sew up this bottom hole real quick. So just thread your needle, collect the front loops of all of these stitches. Pull tight and then secure with a knot. Once 
My biggest tip for working with Chanel yarn is to never just pull and to always wiggle. If you pull a knot and try and close it, you can snap it, but if you wiggle it, it will wiggle itself into place. And it doesn't work for every yarn because sometimes the Chanel yarn falls apart more than others. And then I'm just gonna tuck this little thing in with my scissors so I don't have to save any yarn ends. And there we have our body complete. So now we're going to move on to the ears. To begin the ears, we're gonna start in the same way we did with the head, except this time we're gonna have four single crochets in our magic ring rather than six. So to begin, I'll be using my acrylic creating my magic ring, and then putting four single crochets into that magic ring. Now I'm going to close up this magic ring, again, not too tightly, at least yet. And then for the next round, we're going to increase single crochet and repeat that twice. For the next round, I will increase single crochet two and repeat that twice. Now what I like to do is secure my magic ring, tie these acrylic tails together nice and tight, make sure everything's nice and closed. and then turn the ear right side out. And for the next round, we will increase single crochet three and repeat that twice. For the next round, we are going to increase single crochet four and repeat that twice. And for the next round, we are going to increase single crochet five and repeat that twice. And for the final round, we will decrease in the next stitch, single crochet five, and repeat that twice. Once you have finished, you will slip stitch into the next stitch, chain one, and fasten off, leaving a length of yarn for sewing. And there we are. We need two ears for this pattern, so feel free to replay it if you need to. There's chapters for you in the description that you can click on for an easy way to skip back. For the next step, we are going to make the wing. To begin the wing, we're gonna start in the same way we did with the ear, with our magic ring or our chain two method, and with four single crochets into that magic ring. Close this up, not too tight, and then begin next round, which is an increase, and then a single crochet, and repeat that twice. And for the next round, we're going to increase single crochet two 
and repeat that twice. And just as I did with the ear, I will secure the tail now. Well, it's not really the tail. I'll secure the magic ring now. And then turn this piece right side out. For the next round, we will increase and then single crochet three and repeat that twice. And then for the next round, we will increase single crochet four and repeat that twice. And then for the next round, we are going to increase single crochet five and repeat that twice. For the next round, we will increase single crochet six and repeat that twice. And then for the next round, we will increase and then single crochet seven and repeat that twice. Here's where we're at so far, and now we're going to fold the wing in half, and we're gonna be crocheting through both sides. So in that next two stitches, through both sides, we're going to single crochet. And now we are going to chain two. And in that second chain, we're going to place a single crochet, just like that. And then in the next three stitches, we're going to single crochet, so go through both sides of the wing and then we're going to make another hump so chain two single crochet in that second chain so that hump right there and then single crochet in the next three stitches and we're going to make our final hump here so chain two single crochet in that second chain and then finally single crochet in the last two stitches. Just like so. There we have our wing. I like to chain one and fasten off, leaving a length of yarn for sewing. And there we are. So same as the ears, you'll need two of these. The chapters are in the description and in the video for easy skipping back if you need the pattern. But once you have finished your wings, we can move on to the sewing part. To begin sewing, we're going to begin with the wings. And the way I sew them on is by pressing the wing against the body and sewing across the back all the way up. To begin, I thread my needle, of course. And I'm gonna start on this side. So this will be the right side facing inward. And I'm gonna press this wing against the body and the first stitch always goes two stitches over from the feet lined up right under them and i pull this nice and tight and then that next stitch goes right into the next stitch and so on and so forth all the way up i like to curve the wing in slightly while sewing so bring it in towards the eye not too drastically but just by a little bit
Once I get up to the top, I like to come in a stitch as well and stitch this top round to the body. Kind of curve it in a little bit more, just right at the tip of the wing, just like that. So now you can go back down if you wish to double secure it. I find it's too tight at this point, so I just like to create a knot here with a little archway. I'm gonna do this twice. and then weave this end in directly into the body. I will just stuff this end in. When you do this, be really careful not to snap your own. I've done that before and uh, it was a very sad day. So just be careful not to snap anything while doing that. And now we can attach the second wing. And there's the second wing on. Now we can sew on the ears. So for the ears, I like to start on this side and I will start right against the magic ring and stitch it on down to about here. I'm going to be centered with the eye. So feel free to pin this in place as well if you prefer. I just like to double check as I go, but Everyone has different techniques, so use whichever you prefer. I'm going to begin by stitching right there on the magic ring. And then I'm going to be stitching the ear down. You want to be about two stitches away from the eyes. I'm going to stitch the first side on and then go back around the other way and sew the second side on. Once I get down to that middle of the eye, I'm going to turn and work my way back up. I like to go back around and double reinforce the ears. It's an optional step, but 
I just have made a habit of doing it, so that's what I do for almost every piece I sew on. come all the way around create a little knot like we did with the wings and tuck that in right into the head There's that first ear attached, and now we're going to sew the second ear on in the same way. And here we are, the ears are attached. So the final step, and it's an optional step, is to add the face detailing. So the white around the eyes and the little, they're supposed to look like fangs, but they also kind of look like a nose, which I think is cute either way, you see it. <laughs> For this step, I will get some skinny Chanel. So this is a size four white yarn. You can use any yarn you'd like. Any size four yarn would probably work best. And you're gonna thread your needle and I'm starting from the forehead. I'm gonna bring this yarn down and to the eye. And I'm just gonna pull up some yarn. You don't need a whole ton, but you definitely need some. And then I'm gonna go right up to the top of the eye and bring this tail all the way over to the other eye. And I like to pull this tight. And if you pull it in too much, don't worry. We're actually gonna come back and do it a second time. So repeat this process with the other eye and then come back out underneath the eye where we originally started. And I'm gonna repeat this twice just to give it a thicker line. I like to pull it in enough where the end kind of starts to go under the safety eye. Um, I know some people also glue the white, but I much prefer it to be totally secure and not rely on glue. So just pull it tight enough, use your fingers to kind of press it slightly under the safety eye. Just like that. And then for the nose, you want to be in the middle of the safety eyes, about a stitch away from each eye, and just create a little loop, repeat it on the other side, and then bring that tail right back up. And we're going to tie these two ends together, and then weave them right in.
And there we are. Our bat is finished. It's got the cute little eye details. You can definitely use your needle to enhance anything that might have gone in a little too far. And there, our bat is complete. So as you can see, the white looks a little bit better on the darker ones, but it's still pretty noticeable, still quite cute. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you enjoyed making your own bat. If you finished it and are at this point, definitely let me know down in the comments what yarn you used, what colors you ended up picking. Absolutely love hearing your finished pieces. And if you enjoy the pattern, I would also love to hear your thoughts on it. I personally will be market prepping these patterns since they take about an hour for me. Let me know in the comments what you're using this pattern for, if you're market prepping or if you're just making a gift or even making something for yourself. And with all that said, I will hopefully see you in my next video and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.